Hey guys, we're here today in Valheim, and we're going to take a look at how to build a stave church for you or your group to be able to gather at and lift each other's spirits. The Stave Church is a large and regal building with high vaulted ceilings and often uses the clear story roofing style that we discussed in my roofing video. We've used sconces and braziers to light up the interior with benches set up as the pews. We used a couple wards up on the altar to give it this regal glow and we have an elevated platform that allows us to hide things in order to gain maximum comfort when up near the pulpit. We've also done these cool flower pots and then set some of the pews up with backrest and armrests, which are two ideas I got in a video from, I'm not gonna butcher her name by attempting to say it, but you should definitely go check out her page if you're looking for more cool design ideas like these. In order to build this church, we are going to need 800 wood and 32 core wood. And then if you decide to furnish it with some of the things that I have placed inside of this church, you will need this giant list of items here. And once you've got an area decently flattened out, we're going to do the outline. We're going to do 8 2 meter beams wide and 10 2 meter beams long. Now it's very important on this build since we are going very high that we have blue stability quality support on the entire bottom. Make sure you go around the whole area and if you find any that are bad, go ahead and fill in under it with the hoe by flattening the ground or if you need to raising the ground and making sure it touches to give it blue quality support. Once our outline is in place, we will go ahead and place the entryway. We are going to do a small pop out. So we'll take the two center pieces on one of the eight wide sections and break them out, extend off two clicks. And then we are going to place the doors here. Now there are two options for the doors. If you place down beams and then we place a gate on it, you will experience the issue that you cannot run in it because of that beam. And you can place the gate and then destroy the beam and be able to run in. And that's one option. And option two is just to start out by placing the two side walls we know are going to go there. And then attaching the gate to them. Free floating. And then you don't really have to worry about the beams being in your way. You can then go around the entire building and place one and a half walls high. And then you can go around the entire floor. You are gonna wanna potentially level the ground as we go because we don't want any ground clipping through the floor because that will not look very fancy. I'm also gonna do something I almost never do and I am going to rotate the floorboards every time I place one by two clicks to give that kind of checkerboard pattern that I feel looks nicer since this is a church and we'll give this building that regal look. And then we'll cap it off by just throwing two staircases right at the front at our doors. All right, now we are going to start on our entrance peak. So let's put 45 degree angles right above the doors and one meter horizontal beams coming off the tip of that and the bottom corners of the door. Once that's in place, you can take a 45 degree roofing and kind of place it on the one meter beams so that it is hanging halfway over the door. And then you are going to clip in another one where it normally goes directly above the wall so that you have two pieces overlapping only three meters and do this on both sides. As we go through this entire roofing process, you can feel free to pretty up every part we do by placing some angled beams on it to make it look a little bit nicer. We're going to continue on from our entrance section with an inside corner piece on each side and then from there you can go with standard 45 degree pieces around the building and then obviously place outside corner pieces when you arrive at those alrighty with our first layer done it is time to move up a stage we are going to be probably using various scaffolding systems throughout this, but for the very first section, I can start it from the bottom here, and we are going to place a one meter half wall right on top of the roof sections we just did, and you can go all the way around on that.
once you have the one meter walls around the entire thing, we're going to do another somewhat covered porch roof over the door again. So we'll place 45 degree angled walls over the two center one meter walls. We're then going to place two 45 degree thatch roofing coming off of that. And then we're going to stack two meter beam and a one meter beam underneath the middle seam of those two roofs and the outside corner of it on both sides. We'll pretty it up by adding some angled pieces on the front and some horizontal beams on the sides. Once that's in place, we're gonna roof our clear story section now by doing the exact same thing, starting with inside corners, coming off of our entranceway area and circling around the whole building. Now, once we start moving higher than that second roofing section, the building gets somewhat unstable. So we need to support it. And I have never seen a stave church interior that does not have some grand arcways in it. So we're going to use core wood log poles and go on the four corners and use two of the four meter poles to connect to the ground. And then you can go from the top or from the bottom, whichever you prefer, but you're going to go two seams away from those down the long sides of the church and place two more core wood beams all the way to the roof. That way, if you're entering from the door of your church, the beams are on your right and left and none are blocking your walkway. And then simply for aesthetics, we are going to go on the seam for the core wood and we are going to connect them all with regular wood beams at two meters long. On the front and the back end, a two meter beam would poke out the front. So we're going to use one two meter beam and one one meter beam and do this for both sets of core wood logs. We're then going to wall the second level of roofing with full two meter walls around the entire area. On this upper section here, we are going to begin switching from the hip roof corner into a standard gable roof. So we'll use 45 degree angled walls on the flat front section and continue those up to a peak. This upper section of the building is where stability becomes a actual issue. So you might have to place them in a certain order or risk something snapping. But this peak is as high as we're going, so this shows us that our standard roofing sections will fit on here without snapping. I'm also going to place a one meter beam poking out of the bottom corners on either the front or back end. If you can get more one meter beams to stick, that's cool for the look. But you only need the one to be able to snap on a piece. And we're going to begin this roof halfway on and off so that it is just covering the one meter beam off the back end and then follow that along down the entire side. And by following along that grid, we have created our one meter overlap on the front as well without needing the beams, but you can still add those if you'd like for look. Do this on both sides and do both levels high of the standard thatch roofing. So I have run into the issue that I cannot snap on any more roofing pieces without them immediately breaking because we do not have sufficient stability. Apparently by sheer luck in my test runs of this building, my core wood logs were touching the ground underneath the floor here. So they had blue quality foundation support and gave the roof enough support to finish. None of my poles in here have that. So we are going to have to adjust that afterwards now by removing one piece of ground and using our hoe to either level the ground under it until it gets all the way up or using the raised ground method and getting the ground to barely touch it to give it blue quality support. Do this on each pole until you get the blue foundation support and then we can continue after that. All right, now that we got blue quality supports everywhere, we can finish off the roof.
Alrighty, now we have the roof done. The last interior thing I am going to do is place a one meter wall on the back end of the church, even with the first core wood log pole we have, with some stairs on the side to create an altar. Now you are going to floor this altar section here, even with that one meter high wall, but this open floor does give you the perfect spacing to place a hearth down and to place some other comfort items underneath this floor because I don't like having any building in my base, even something decorative like a church here that does not offer something helpful. So I figured a max comfort church makes sense and would make it have some form of use. So do that and place some things under the floor before you floor it in. Or you can even use this building as anything else you'd like and be able to place some upgrades for a workbench on the floor or something like that. Alrighty guys, that is how you build the very large and regal stave church. You can see I threw some dragon adornments on the front. Because some of the churches I looked up seem to have some adornments actually coming off in this same manner. And then I threw a cross up on the top because I think a church should have a cross steeple on it. If you agree and are interested in doing one of these, it's pretty simple. You just do a two meter beam and then off of the seam of that, place one meter beam going up and one to each side. It is somewhat big and tall, but with the size of this building, it actually doesn't look that huge once it's up there. You get some banners up for some decoration. Braziers will help you heat the area with fire and give you comfort. And I placed my braziers up on the second peak section of the entryway and the back end and you can reach them to fill them from the altar smoke doesn't have an issue because of how tall the roof is and you can get a pretty cool looking aesthetic building for your base hopefully this was helpful to you thanks for watching i will see you next time